here. I'm standing right now with Coach Colbat of Team SMG. Now, a lot of people have questions, but we know that this actually isn't new for Team SMG. You guys have a lot of unconventional compositions. Can you explain the reason why you guys do these picks? Uh, I think it gives like a sense of visual flair right, to some extent. And then at the same time, um, it's this, this pick in particular is just a small tribute to our previous coach who isn't with us right now. So yeah, I think it's nice that we have something to like sort of immortalize him in. Yeah. A little shout out to APAC. Expect more of this from Team SMG. Uh, thank you very much, Mika and, and Coach Cobalt. That comp, that game, that entire map, Baby Bay and Ender uh, was crazy. I've been hosting Valorant for a long time and Baby Bay have not had that much fun. Ever. They, they definitely immortalized it. I, I, I will say, just like you were saying, that was a great dedication to uh, their coach who's not with them anymore. And that's, I mean, that, they, they made a statement. I mean, not only the comp, but the aim. The aim was ridiculous from all of them. Yeah, I mean, they, they came in very clearly some shooters in the in this Unreal. roster. Like, absolutely. Especially Aneri and Alexi just doing insane things. I wanted to look at this pistol round because it's their first round of attack. And coming out, it's like, oh, we're stuck behind this one way. Like, what do we do? Actually, no, we're bored. Let's go fight them when the second one comes in. And this is the flash combo I was talking about. They did this every single round. These Phoenix Reyna flash combos with the Cypher cam coming out as well. So it's two different things you have to shoot. And if you shoot either of them, you're also getting Phoenix flash. Then they also are doing some fun things like farming up the phoenix orb they did that every round using that cypher cage to be able to scale in the same way you'd throw a, uh, a viper orb as well i don't think it's better than a viper orb but it worked for what they needed and they never stopped holding w and we're touching spawn we touch spawn it's schmeeging man this is textbook <laughs> schmeeging i don't I even need it. the sophistication there's no point but speaking on like how, you, how you're talking about with the a reclear they always had something for rubble they always had a nade they always had a molly it was it was actually clean how they're pairing up their utility this is the crazy thing, right? Because uh, we didn't expect them to uh, pull out this comp. And the fact that they did this comp with a Neri of all people not playing the duelist, I think is crazy. And look, look how much fun they're it's having. It's just well. silly. They're having a, I mean, why wouldn't you? You're 13 3 <laughs> playing four duelists and a cypher. Not even like an actual smoke. But yeah, a, a Neri with the cypher even had really funky camera ideas, like multiple different locations around Rubble, where they use spotted baby way, Very where like, cool. they're cameras that you can barely even see on the defense, and if you want to break them, you have to like jump over a uh, route, or you have to like push up way too far, it's so frustrating. Yeah, and I think that was like part of the game plan of all that reclear utility. If you if you go off to shoot the cam, they know you're in a spot where you're in the open and you're gonna get owned by that double flash, or if you're hiding behind rubble and they spot you with it, you're gonna get mollied out. It's actually really well thought out. And you know what, like all props to them, but at the same time I felt like EG kind of gave them too many fights that they shouldn't have. Yeah, I think it was tough for EG. Like, obviously, you're loading into that game. And you're like, what? Is this a troll? What are they doing? Is are this they a trolling? Troll? Are we remaking? <laughs> I don't understand anything. Uh, but the fact was, like, whenever they, like, on EG's attack, and they lost, like, the first seven rounds of the game, whenever there was that rubble fight sent after them, which you're never getting through that choke when there's a neon stun, like Phoenix Molly, blinds, it's ridiculous. They kept running to the other side of the map. And that's where Aniri was waiting on her own. And that's what cut them apart. It's like they couldn't win the straight up fight into the, the strong side of the map for uh, SMG. And when they went to the weak side, Aniri was still good for two or three before she would finally go down. I mean, I felt like she was good for the whole uh, squad at one point. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've already heard from the coach of Team SMG, but let's see what the coach of EG, Coach Jovi, had to say. He's standing by now with Mika Fabs. Hey guys, Mika Fabs here. I'm standing right now with Coach Jovi of EG. Jovi, obviously nobody was expecting that first map. How do you plan on back, bouncing back from round two? So that map's already done. We're going into our next map. We already know where we messed up. We gave him too much respect and that's it. That was our warm up script. Now we came to play. Okay, so. expect a lot more from EG this coming map too. Oh, a warm-up scrim, he says. Yeah. Uh, that that's, a, was. that's a gangster scrim right there. <laughs> um, uh, on, what can you see? What you guys can see on your screen right now is Aniri on Duelist versus Aniri on her uh, debut <laughs> of Cipher. And wow. so you're telling me that the left wow. side is Duelist and the right side is Cipher? I am telling that you that. Real? I think they're both Duelist. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, what? Like, 
she was so good. I don't get it. Again, like you've said this already, but she is the main duelist for Team SMG, <laughs> right? And she's the only one not playing duels. That does not make sense. Yeah, she still was the. Yeah, I mean, the, the round you're about to see here is where uh, SMG, they want a thrifty and Baby Bay. We didn't anticipate EG losing this. And at the time, you turned to me and said, I think they're a little bit tilted. Yeah, I mean, like, you're down 7-2 right now. The only round they won before this, I think they invested, like, three alts into the round. Yeah. And which, which they didn't even need to, because that's what you were saying, Ender. And, and you know what? It's like, the bomb was not planted for that mound area, that, yeah, that mound area. So it's like, it's definitely frustration until we're not thinking clearly, you know? And this is kind of what happens, like when you play against a play style that's so aggressive, it forces you to be uncomfortable and you don't know what's happening and you're getting outshot. It's, it's tough. I mean, I, I've, I've done this to teams before. I know, <laughs> I know it works. It, but at the same time, you know, at this level, I feel like you should be able to have some type of answer or some type of adaptation to punish it. I mean, ultimately, like, it's so hard within that moment to be able to like yeah. flip the switch, right? Especially when it's all about these like micro interactions, like quick fights you're taking. You're you're getting lost in the sauce. So that's why I appreciate the mentality of yeah, that map ended. We're it moving is. on. It, it to did. The next. It did indeed end. And if I'm EG, I'm probably hoping that I'm not playing against four <laughs> duelists again yeah. on Haven. Four smokes, maybe. You know, might, they might yeah. as well whip it out. Yeah. Uh, as we head on to Haven, I do want to quickly uh, touch on Nora because we uh, we set up a lot of expectations of what she could do for this EG team. And I think it was a bit unfortunate that right off the bat she had to go up against a challenge uh, like that. But what did you guys make of uh, her debut here for this team? I actually think she played fine. I think she played good. She, she didn't look that uncomfortable. I mean, she had that one round where the rocket was not needed, but at that point they're already getting steamrolled. So that's a little, like, you can get a little slack. What, what I didn't expect was the team not to be stepped up. And, and I think that's what you touched on earlier. And uh, that's a solid point. Yeah, at the same thing, I think that Haven is a map that they're going to be moving into, right? And it's a map they have a ton, a ton of experience on. I think they can try to slow things down as well um, in the game. And I, I actually don't think Team SMG are going to have like some madness cooked up. Maybe a raid, yeah. maybe two duelists, but nothing more than that. I, I think for EG, what they need to get back into is just like focus on on their attacking side, like actual like committed hits. Because I think once they started like contacting around on their attack, they were getting eaten up in these mm -hmm. gunfights and. Like, even if EG bounce back, like, Team SMG are better shooters. They prove yeah. that decisively in game one. I do not want to see slow contact, lurk style play. I want to see them do, like, more committed, uh, like, all ins on their executes into sight. Build that up around Nora's entry as well. Yeah, and speaking of uh, great shooters, we actually have a tweet from one of our uh, favorite duelist players, all the way from <laughs> APAC, who was uh, watching Game Changers. If you guys want to take a look at this, it is Jing from Paper X <laughs> saying, and I I thought Paper X was crazy. <laughs> Bad. Maybe a little bit inspired, huh? He kind of wishes he played this in the finals, maybe. Yeah, you wish, <laughs> Jing. Yeah. He would have loved it as well. Who do you, you think he would have played? That. The Rays? Surely. Or wait, would no, he, would he be, be the, the Cypher? cypher. <laughs> he's on the Cypher. <laughs> the Jing Cypher would be yeah. next level. I mean, you know what you did was absolutely crazy when a player like Jing is yeah. saying that what you did was absolutely crazy. But also, that puts them in a position of being able to two. 0 EG, uh, Baby Bay, which goes against everything that you thought about this matchup. Oh, it's not going to happen. That was just a throwaway map. It was a scrim, you know? So <laughs> it's all part of the plan, you know? Like, they, 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 they wanted that to happen. But I, in, in all seriousness, I do think that this map will be a lot different. I think that they'll be able to <laughs> have some prep against, like, the comp that uh, SMB is going to be running. Because I feel like there's no way you could have prepared for that comp. How do you do that? And especially, yeah. like, I think that EG is a team that's good at counter stratting. Like, you can't counter There's nothing to counter strat there. You didn't even know they were running it. If anything, I'm looking <laughs> forward to, like, the future of this tournament for Team SMG. Yeah. It's like, do teams ban it because they don't want to ban the Lotus away in, in map select because they don't want to <laughs> touch that comp <laughs> at all? Or do they, like, disrespect it? Like, oh, I mean, they're playing no smokes. Like, we're going to destroy that. Like, that's so free, you know? Like, that's such a weird element to throw yeah. in. Kind of how you're talking about, like, Sunset and coming in immediately and proving you can play that. Coming in with an off the wall strategy that you just dominate on is another way of just like completely changing the meta for your uh, map phase for the rest Absolutely. of the tournament. I mean, you got to remember the team, if they win, if they're able to take down uh, EG today, the team that's waiting for them in the next round is G2. And G2 probably watching this right now being like, what is going on? What do we do? But G2, <laughs> they've run the Yoru, they've run the Railer in the past. They're not super. That was, that was old G2. Was old G2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you it's, know, it's new blood on G2. To be fair, new G2 looked really good today. Too. That's true. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not for duelist good, though. 
No, I mean. I don't think anybody could do that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know who's gonna shoot as well as, as this yeah, team. Yeah, that's the real takeaway here, is because I, I, I kind of doubted Team SMG because <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. they come from a region they've just dominated all year long, right? That can't be a good, like, it's obviously a good thing because you're very good, but, like, I want to see a team that's actually challenged strategically and on the aim level as well to see them come in immediately on day one. They've won me over as oh, a fan, yeah. and I yeah. feel like they probably just won over thousands of people. Do you, are you with me now when I said Team SMG to the final? Are I'm, you with me now? I don't know if I'm ready to say final yet because <laughs> I want to see what a normal comp looks like on the international stage, that but I'm funny. definitely, the rating has skyrocketed okay, for me. Okay, you say normal, but we are going on to Haven next and even on there you know they play uh they play the breach sova and astra in this meta you wouldn't even look at that as as really no, uh, normal that is true i definitely th think that the double controller is a better comp but i think if you're able to get value out of the breach utility and the sova and the astra utility and maximize the 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 utility in that aspect, I think you could actually beat the comp. I think you could beat the Viper comp. Yeah, and looking at the Prime Gaming agent select here, uh, things have calmed down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like this, okay. uh, you know, going away from actual like double smoke comp ideas and just continuing to play, you know, build around uh, Nora here on the jet for the team. Uh, the Astra, like you were talking about, I do think makes it really hard to play, especially on the C side, because like a fault line goes down logs and then you have a stun that's landing on back plat. There's almost nowhere you can actually play comfortably on the site. That's one of the big values I see from Astra, as well, of course, the global star control on defense, the pullbacks to be able to take space as well and deny chokes. Yeah, and, and on attack, I believe that the Asha can have mad value on that post plant. It's going to be tough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and let's see if this series is going to make it to a third map and send it back to your casters, Doug and Athena. Thank you so much, Jinsu. Yeah, I mean, for those who are watching at home, if you like the crazy four duelists, you've got that. If you like the standard comps, we've got that too. There's a little bit of a uh, little bit of something for everyone here, Athena. Yeah, I mean, it's looking. I was kind of disappointed that I didn't see another <laughs> four duelist comp coming into this, but again, I'm excited to see how both these teams play now that they have like this really good uh, similar comp. Again, we do have the only difference is the Omen and the Astra, and kind of what the Dust was talking about. I like the Astra. I like the global pick. Yeah, tell me why. Break, break down a little bit more. What is it about? Astra on Haven that you seem to prefer over the over the Omen? Uh, Omen is really good with the paranoia at like taking care of like singular lanes, like the linear lanes on the site, like short, for example, or during the executes taking care of long or site. But Astra is really good at supporting no matter where she is, supporting at either side of the map and completely denying a lot of info. Here's a point. We'll see how things play out. EG testing the waters towards A. Shock Dart's not going to feel good, but a flash to dissuade any sort of swing. Feels like a stalemate for now. Yeah, I mean, both these teams looking to take that A main control. I think it is really, really important. They're retaking that short line, the jet and the breach kind of holding it down. Playing a really good crossfire on site, but this info is just a little bit too much. But, I mean, Killjoy lurking up. Killjoy versus Killjoy here on this B site, I think that's this lurking scenario is the best because they don't have KJ Util towards that B site. Right. They don't have KJ Util towards Garage. It's literally just a person, but they don't know that. And the three towards oh. A, Jeff thinks she has the line, but again, all the the whole team is right behind her. Sova's here to help Alexi getting one and Neri getting two. This is just like a play-by-play -play of the first game where their mechanical skill is coming on top. And they're fully committing onto this and very nicely done by Thea to punch back and drop two. But Starbound left alone in 1v3, a difficult situation for him. But can they pull it off? The first falls and then that swing from either side is just too much for them to handle. SMG win the pistol once more. And yeah, it, it really kind of felt like once the space was taken short from an airy, there was just uh, While well, they're pushing short, we gotta go. We gotta yeah. commit, we get out onto the site or at least attempt to, and everything just kind of fell apart from there. Yeah, I mean, we had the KJ trying to do a really good lurk towards B, but it yep. wasn't enough to get the info that, hey, there actually is nothing there. They were not prepared for the fast flood from SMG onto the site because it was just so ready. They were just so ready for it because right. they did have the com competition towards that long side and the short side, like you said. Dueling fault lines at the beginning of the round and the dart to make sure no one's pushing up aggressively towards short. However, they have no idea that they've gone up long and Ares already up close. Oh and once again, God. it's a firing range. This time, EG able to keep things competitive, at least for now. But once again, we start to see the gun difference on full display. 
Yep, the second round by here, 3v2, not that bad against Pistols, but again, the Spectre is kind of coming out on top, and we get to see Neri on her at her duelist role, just showing us that her confidence does not only stem from the first game, she's confident in both. And now contacting up into a site, such a good call, because they know that KJ is not here, clearing all their angles before they plant. They have to make a play here, though, because it is a 3v2. They have some time. They have also upgraded weapons. Spike Power Pixel A with the Spectre. Starbound with the Marshal. Problem back. is they have no no have no info. They have no reconnaissance on if anyone's coming in from the flank. Where are they flooding in from? Now you start to see that utility dump through, but Kohaibi has no idea that there was somebody playing graffiti. Fortunately, <laughs> the teammates were there to save the day. That could have been disaster. Oh Ultimately God. averted. All good, SMG win the second. That could have been so dangerous. Breach just standing in the corner for free. No one is clearing, but again, the util dump was insane. And that's exactly what I was talking about. They have to make a play there. Right, right. The other team has full util. You can't just let them use all of that to take back the site. This long control is such another war zone. They are having this battle. Seems like A main last run, last right. map on Lotus, mm -hmm. and now it is looking like A long here. And both teams are not stopping; they are putting up the fights. The problem is, if that if that is what we're in for, if the last map was any indication of that, you you have to favor SMG Don't here as well. But much like Joby was saying prior to the the map starting, the head coach for Evil Geniuses, all good, right? Yeah, we got we got messed up, but that's fine. We'll move on. We'll see if oh. things are equalizing. And, and honestly, Athena, I'd love to get your thoughts because this just feels like SMG is going to continue to press them where it hurts and continue to apply pressure. And Aerie with an opener once more. Yeah, I mean, SMG on that bonus round, they have to go and play for picks or gamble or take the close range fights. But Ineri just showing, I, I, I'm just going to keep saying this. She is so confident right yeah, now. And yep. she is showing that she deserved to be here and deserves to be here right now because she's just walking up short, taking that space that they're not taking. And honestly, EG didn't use any util towards that A-long. No. They knew that they weren't going aggressive. So I think that's a big tell that EG is kind of giving away that they're only using util to take the space that they're trying to get. And we talk so much about how confidence is a key indicator to success. In this game in particular, for whatever reason, in Valorant, if you're feeling it, chances are you're going to win things out. And that feels like that's all we're getting on the side of SMG. But EG with the gun advantage, continue to push their way towards C. Kahibi, though, holding the line and Shirazi is as well. The nightmare continues for EG as Starbound is left alone. And there's just way too many targets for them to clean up. Yeah, this is looking rough. I mean, the Astro using so much delay, that smoke on site, playing it really well. They have this crossfire keeping back site. They're not overextending through their smokes, trying to fight through that garage. It's just, again, like, Jet walks up a main. She gets the line. Honestly, you need to re-clear that. You need to retake, right. push them off. But instead, they let them get that info, did not contact back up or re-clear the A main lines, and they just rotated off and let them run into their stacked sites. So SMG, really good reads here coming in. Now they have the op in the hands of an Aerie. EG pushing towards C with everyone they could possibly have. And once again, we're seeing SMG just take what's being given to them. And this is, you know, we, we're talking about this a lot, but it's because it's proving to be so problematic for EG. The denial of what SMG are doing as far as taking space at the beginning of the rounds is forcing EG into these boxes that they, I can't imagine they're gonna want to play in. Yeah, it's, it's so hard just combating this jet that's just taking the line every round mm -hmm. for free. Again, like I said, EG is notorious. They're using only util to retake items to put pressure and retake that space. But Neri actually missing that shot. But Kahai be here in garage holding it down, denying that free space that they thought that they could take. Well, and also like the, the boldness to just jump out of that smoke <laughs> in window. After you get the kill, you've got more spam coming through, just jumps out and, is, and maintains control of that space. Right, like the little things that SMG are doing are so good right now. Yeah, I mean, Breach behind her, ready to help with that util. And then EG ending into that A take. Neri kind of stuck on sight. Theo with a one tap round. with that USP, the dart scan, the util. That was a really good round to really push back into that jet site. That was the op too. It hasn't been picked up. Kind of sitting just barely out of arm's reach. EG has managed to get the spike down. Remember, it's just two marshals and pistols the rest of the way for the attacking side. Not nearly the same for SMG as they have four rifles. They're healthy. 
no damage really taken whatsoever. And now they have this utility that they're going to be able to funnel out. Note there is no flank or anything like that. All funneling out through cut. And it's all working out for SMG once more. Much like we saw in the previous round, Starbound find themselves in a situation where there are way too many targets to deal with. Another round in favor of SMG. Yeah, these retakes looking amazing from SMG. Again, their util on these retakes is amazing. They're literally just getting a main for free. I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but it's super important because they're not taking any util out to get Jet on the A main line. So on the retakes, they have Breach Sun ready, they have Flashes ready, they have the Breach Boom ready, and they just completely uh, remove one angle on that retake. They're flooding in together. They have such a good set of util to take that site. And EG, they can't play in like three different spots on site without getting any sort of util. So it's like, it's so hard when they're not pressuring that A main line. They have to deny this from an area. Revealing area. This time the dart long and the smoke short, but the line is taken either way from an area. I think I heard an airy shoot too. So there's confirmation the op is still online. Lori took some damage too. Yeah, I mean that smoke blocked off her line of sight and in turn made them over rotate towards A and now they're taking advantage of that space. EG is finally reading the rotates and they're taking B on that site, trying to fight for that C link. Pixel with the first kill onto that uh, KJ, which is actually super important. They're denying the super fast flood, but you got to be careful here. Starbound does have the lockdown. It's time ticking away, but they also have the Rolling Thunder that they can use for the counter. You see that go online. Kamiyu has already fallen. Alexi with the tap. They have a Rolling Thunder as well. That just fell to the ground. They never committed the lockdown. They were playing all off on site, and the defuse happens right under their noses. Oh, no. That was so good until it wasn't. Breach with the Rolling Thunder just did not go off. I think that EG had a plan there, but their plan was absolutely obliterated way faster than they expected. I would, yeah, I'd love to take a look at that one more time, or obviously I know we can't do this, but to have listened to comms in a situation like that, like what was the call, what was going on? They had a couple of tools that they could have used to secure that round, and it, it just seemed a little discombobulated, a little disjointed. Fortunately for them, if there's a silver lining, it's that they are going to carry these two into the next round. So they can use the rolling cutter here. They can use the lockdown here as well. Yep, any execute from this team is going to be really powerful. Coming in with another C split, it looks like, going on to that site. But again, we do have the Dumble Senti set up here. We've seen them play this before. Just avoiding all util, delaying for so long with the Soba ult. And Shirazi showing us that she can Senti on site. She can hold it down. 70 HP, still causing problems. As the smoke dissipates, the swing is there. This time it's going in favor of EG as Lori comes out with two massive kills. The remaining members of... SMG are now starting to rotate over, and once again, we've got to talk about the ults that are available for the attacking side. The Hunter's Fury and the Rolling Thunder should secure this round for EG. Yeah, there should be no reason for SMG to take this round with the amount of util left on the EG side. The drone kind of seeing what's happening, going on, tagging that jet. There is no sticking of the diffuse happening, but no smokes. This is going to be so hard for SMG. Yeah, huge to spot. I mean, the drone, the value that Lori got with the drone there was massive. It still gets into a 1v2, though. A Rolling Thunder's Prime. Power Pixel A drops it. Did not get to half, so there's still a lot of work for an area to do here. And they're just cutting their losses. They're saving. EG are finally going to find themselves on the board. Yep, SMG getting use of that Breach ult getting out from the EG side, so now they're no longer scared to play on sites. So I think that last breach out was a little bit of a stretch. It was a 2v1, but again, EG finally getting a round on the board, and I think it's a round well-deserved for you really clutching up here, just taking the fights as she goes, and I think that's something that's super important to rebuild that confidence in this best of three for EG. Make a really good point there about the Rolling Thunder. They do still have the Hunter's Fury in the lockdown. We've talked about that a little bit, and you're right, a massive round from Lori. But an Aerie still with the AWP online. Couple of ults pretty close by. You've got the Cosmic Divide and then the Lockdown for Kahibi as well. But a heavy push towards A. This is fast. This is pacey. Into the jet, into the AWP. Oh, they read that like a book. Yeah, I love what an Aerie did there. The dash backwards to suggest that they had crossed, gone back into main, but they dropped the, what'd you call it? The Breach Blast? 
I call it the boom. The, I don't the breach know that boom. <laughs> I've never heard that before, but I, I, I love that. I'm going to steal that. Yeah, I mean, her mechanics showing us there that she is a jet player at heart because she dodged all that util, even though she was getting scanned by the dart. Any dart breakers? Mm. Hello? No mm. dart breakers? It's okay because she's still alive. She got out of that situation unscathed and with a kill. Caution here. And silence kind of creeps over the, the map for the first time in what feels like all game. As EG decide to play this one a little bit more cautiously and a little bit more quietly. And that might be the key to their success. You see the flash come through, the dart back sight, the smokes drop. Now they should have a little bit of room to work, but be cautious. Alexi's on the flank. There's going to be pushing him behind them, and there's nothing really to dissuade that or keep that back. If they're going to play for a post plant through window, Alexi's going to have a field day with this. Yeah, I mean, she's using that drone. She gave away her position, but it doesn't matter because the free tag gets her a kill. Starbound does not care. Peeking into that A link, getting those free kills. They have to fight up as soon as they know that there is a flanker. Alexi no going in. Way. Wow. Oh my goodness, Starbound. That was bold. That was bold. That was amazing. Yo, Starbound played that really well. Yeah, but Alexi just like <laughs> tanked the nano yeah. to try to catch him sleeping to get the swing. That was. Uh, that was very, very bold, uh, but well considered. Uh, yeah, I think there were a couple of things that maybe go a bit, a bit sideways, if you will. Alexi giving the position away, ultimately stays alive long enough, but couldn't really cause the same problems that you would had you been a little bit more pacey and had you gone to fight window instead of using the drone there. Either way, it works out for EG. They get another round on the board. Yeah, for sure. They were ready for that fast flood too. SMG doing a good job of rotating, but EG is actually catching up fast with the pace and mm -hmm. matching SMG's pace right now. Speaking of pace, SMG aggressive to open the round in towards short. And there's a whole freaking firing squad behind an area as well. Proves to be a key to success, but this time, Scary Shark, who had had a quiet start to the map, gets a couple of other kills. And this should be a very clean round out for Evil Geniuses. Which is, I believe is the first time we've said that <laughs> all series. <laughs> so far, yep. Yeah, really good round coming in. I mean, right now, saving as many guns, trying to get as many guns down. Mm -hmm. SMG needs Spike to make planted. sure that they do get those guns down, but we'll just see what happens because ruining their economy is really possible. And Camille kind of showing exactly how she's going to do that because if they lose too many guns, EG will not be able to buy next round. Like, they will have such a weird buy. Half armor, maybe no util on a couple players, but it doesn't matter because Alexi's going in. Tries to get another kill. Not able to. Say and Lori clean things up. EG get the third on the round. They have four weapons saved. They have a couple of ults cooked up as well. And again, we've, we've got to remember this is attack side. Haven, EG should be able to keep this competitive. I think a 7-5 half. Should you know what I well. think is weird is Inari hasn't moved. She hasn't switched her spot with the off. Mm. Like, she's been offing that same line every single round so far. She hasn't moved. Hmm. I think that's kind of detrimental to SMG yeah, at this sure. point because EG is obviously reading that. They're seeing, like, okay, she's still offing A. Let's yeah. rehead somewhere else. See ya. And you see that in the setup. It seems like another split towards C. Perhaps a fast one, too. The dash already up past the alarm bot in towards garage, trying to clear out little cubby. There's nothing there. Yeah, they're going to split towards C. They still have the, the lockdown from Starbound. They still have the Hunter's Fury from Lori. They have the tools here. The problem is SMG's already here. Starbound creeping forward in the smoke, not finding anything. The numbers, the defense from SMG hold up. The fast rotate proves to be a problem. Can Lori do this on her own? A 1v1 30 HP tries to tuck tail. Tries to get away, and Aries up on it, and it's a 4K for Lori. The Red Bull clutch for EG. Holy smokes, what a round. Oh, my God. Lori really putting in the work there. That was not looking good. Like you said, SMG had that fast flood. Shirazi playing on site, holding it down, showing why she can be a sensi on that Aster and hold it down. But then Lori, oh, my goodness. Look at these shots just taking the fights. KJ all ticking down that lockdown and Neri could have waited literally half a second longer and it would have been done but Lori that <laughs> I love that talk that talk the yelling you can hear and see the energy and you can feel it through the screen man that was maybe a momentum turner for yeah, EG. That feels like a big swing yeah. moment for sure because I, I think you, you highlighted it very well and Neri why why swing <laughs> that early right why? like just a bit ahead of it it would have been the freest kill ever. Um, and it would have been probably the freest round ever after the fast flood, the quick rotate from the defense. But 
a small mental mistake like that. And, you know, we, we've known for as much as EG has new pieces to the roster, we know the commodity that Lori is, right? Yeah. We saw Lori pop off on the international stage last year. Lori's nuts. Yeah. So you give a little bit of spark there, right? You give a little bit of fire there. Jovi's very vocal, as you can see on your screen here. And there's room for EG to make something happen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, catching her off guard and Nari kind of thinking that maybe Lori's going to fall back and try to avoid the lockdown. But no, Lori's just showing that she knows why she's here and she's here to show that and she's not afraid anymore. That first map has nothing to do with this second map going into it. And again, four ults on this EG side now. They have the Hunter Fury. They have the Lockdown. They have Omen ult, and they have Jet Knives. They have so much to work with, all for way. the next two, three rounds even. SMG only on a pistol buy. They have plenty of money too. I'm, I'm surprised that they're choosing to use the blades here. Um, and perhaps not save that in case something goes a little sideways. I either way. Again, you see this aggression from SMG towards A main, both in short and long, and an Aries fallen. Yeah, both teams using this battle towards A, but an Aries kind of getting picked off because she is starting to get a little bit predictable. But we do see the three mm -hmm. on SMG moving around on that B side, playing a very close setup. They're stacking because, again, they have pistols. What are right. they going to do? Yeah. No real choice otherwise. First blade, first blade goes just a bit wide. Scary shark feeling things out, not locking. What's on the other side, and they want to split back towards C. I mean, it's been a side of success for them many a time before. See if they can do it again. There's a fast flank, not just one. There are two members of SMG who are hot to trot run. right now. You're going to have to push in finally. The lockdown used from Sarban. We haven't seen that the entire time. Kohaibi getting a little bit of pressure and a little bit of work done on Delori. But the problem is, Alexi's going to be do able to do this outside of the lockdown. If they can continue to apply pressure here simultaneously, there's a lot for EG to deal with. The smoke first there. That is a disaster once more. Alexi's gotten three. They're going to have to do it on their own. And Starbound saves the day for Evil Geniuses. That would have been a bloody mess. That was not that was not clean at all. The piss around coming in. Dude, Alexi with these flanks, the Sova flank is something that you never expect. No, and yeah. the value that she's getting out of it is insane right now. Like this, that is not what you want to be happening. EG needs to realize that SMG has flanked almost every single round except for when they go A. Like of the, that of is the series. Of the series. <laughs> not like just this map. Yeah, yeah. Every single round of the series, they have flanked. So they really need to be more aware of that. But again, Starbound closing it out. She's showing that she's cool. Take flight. Enemy mark. 11th round of the half. Here the Hunter's Fury online. That very well may hurt. Not getting nearly as much as I thought it looked like Alexi was going to be able to net. Yeah, Neri here still on that A line, man. I want to see her doing something different, but EG's just sitting here poking, prodding, feeling out exactly what is happening because. Now this is where we kind of see them changing the pace of the whole game and forcing SMG to start playing at their pace. AG so patient. Full use onto Garage, but Kohaibi does not care. There's a lot of pressure onto Shirazi though, and she's handling it beautifully. The Omen up behind her gets a kill onto Scary Shark. They drop the Rolling Thunder to cause more problems, and Shirazi still goes unchecked. A second kill, a third right beneath her, and it's found. 3K, a prime gaming flawless for the defense, and what an answer back from SMG. Yeah, Shirazi really showing us why she picked this Astra because she is using it phenomenally. EG cannot clear that smoke without losing one body every single time. Kohaibi with that first kill, absolutely beautiful hold, and Shirazi just using everything. I mean, the breach ult from the other side of the map, helping her out, she holds it down, no one is clearing her, everyone's flooding into sight. That was literally a perfect round played by SMG. Yeah, it really was. I think. Uh, Shirazi's going to get a lot of the credit there, but Kohaibi, or excuse me, and Kamiyu, they're the ones who set it up for that to yeah. even take place. Beautifully done. Into the last round of the half. Keep a quick cup, keep a quick eye on some of the ults. It's hard oh to God. say. Yeah, remixing that one. That was crazy. <laughs> uh, and w we've got to point out very quickly, Ineri moved, as you had requested, taking all the space down C-Long already with the op. 
Yeah, I mean, this is really, really big info because as we can see, we have three stacked towards the A sign. Shirazi's just taking her one against Starbound. That's not what you want to happen here. And that's going to allow Neri to be so much faster on this. The alarm bot doesn't matter anymore. The turret doesn't matter anymore. And we find ourselves again in a situation where SMG's quick on the flank. They're trying to win the fight on the site, and EG are not finding any room there. Behavi tries to get the snap on, cannot. But Alexi can, and again, no we had to keep an eye on the flank. It was a 7-5 in favor of SMG. A beautiful round, all things considered, from the defense. Yep, they definitely picked up the pace that they were trying to do, getting that early info and over-rotating to the sites where they think EG is going to end. But EG, I mean, they did so good bringing back the rounds that they thought that weren't really close. Yep. Yep. But SMG, again, look at this. They flooded. They were all here, and the Neri is just zooming down short, ready to help, just in case anything went wrong. I think, again, like, these plays, these rotations, the adaptation from SMG is working so well. It wasn't as big of a gap, but still a lead for SMG at halftime. We're going to throw it down to the desk to break it down. Thank you very much, Doug and Athena. EG, they made an effort to get back into this game, but uh, Baby Bay, that 5-0 deficit, I think, is costing them a little bit. Yeah, I mean... It's a miracle, I think, that they <laughs> that they brought this back. That Lori clutch, like that, could have easily been. Oh yeah. Let's be honest here. And then yeah, and then this this was crazy. Like losing a round like this is so tilted. You have the advantage in every way. You have numbers up. And yeah, this pick is fine, but the bomb is being defused, and we don't don't kill him in time. It's just so rough. Yeah, it just, oh it, like, you don't gosh. end up getting the ping off of the dart. Nothing ends up working. It slips away from you. And and the crazy thing was, like, that was a round that was obviously stolen away yeah. from EG, right? That stinks. But then there were so many rounds after that that EG only just narrowly won. Like, rounds that could have easily gone the other way. Uh, whether it was that fight down long, the three versus two, where they've got Breach Ult, Sovolt, but they try not to use them, they take the fights. Every fight is lost. They say, okay, actually, we just have to invest the Breach Ult now to secure the round. There are a couple more tough ones after that. I'm still, it was 7-5, and yeah, EG got back close, but it still doesn't feel comfy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely signs of life. Like, the last game was brutal, so I'm very happy with what we saw so far. I think they need this pistol. Yeah, you need pistol, mainly, obviously, the round win, but they need to get an op online quick, I think, in this. And by winning pistol, that sort of speeds you ahead to get an op as early as round three or round four in the hands of Nora. I want to see Nora show up with that op in hand. Well, let's see if they can win this pistol indeed and get the second half underway. Back to our casters, Doug and Athena. Thank you so much, Jinsu. Yeah, a 7-5 half uh, in favor of SMG. We've put one in the books. Now we get to see how Haven closes out the attack side for SMG. As Athena, we've talked about, they like to play fast. They like to play aggressive. It's flashy. It's a lot of fun to watch, and it could be problematic on the attack side, Haven. Yeah, I mean, we're literally already seeing Neri here with the frenzy oh, ready to go. Whatever yeah. strat they're doing, it's going to be fast. Yeah. And she's going to be entering with that frenzy. Standing and we ahead. see EG here with a three people set up towards A with the breach close in line. So it is somewhat of a perfect setup to counter whatever it is that SMG is trying to do. Beautiful response, though, Ooh. from Power Pixelite. That flash was gorgeous. The swing out from Lori, they read that beautifully. Amazing shutdown of whatever it is SMG was trying to do. That short was not open for business at all. Four people on the EG side towards that A side, and they are going to slowly rotate off. And now KJ alone versus three. Here we go. Starbound is ahead of it. The turret has been cleared, and that should confirm any sort of suspicions of what's happening on the other side. EG, though, a little bit cautious about this one. Not wanting to fully flood, not wanting to pull it. Oh, Kai, he's behind them! They have two oh, behind no. them! Three kills go that way! The shot dart was ill-advised and poorly timed, and that's the only thing that saves EG. What that on earth was that? It was almost a disaster. I mean, surely, you know, you don't have num you have numbers. You expect that the other team is gonna do something aggressive right. to make those numbers even. Yeah, but they still were not ready for it. I mean that that was scary. That was scary. But again, a good recovery from EG. Winning out that round. They did need that pistol because now they are on that second round by the pistols. Not much they can do here. But again, look, completely caught off guard. Alexi and Kohaibi getting those two kills. Super important, but Starbound was ready. Starbound and Power Pixel here just doing a great job retaking back that power and retaking back that space. And you got to imagine Alexi 
regrets that shock dart coming out. Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. I've been there. <laughs> That's heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, again, Sheriff's here. SMG, not much they can do but find picks or group up and just execute. So looking like they're going to do something towards that long A side here, walking up, contacting in, and not using their util to execute. Three spotted towards long. You see the utility dump. They're going to commit. So I thought they were going to commit Ooh. to this as they drop some Astro Stars and everything, but maybe feeling like they can find but more success elsewhere. That was actually really interesting because they used one flash, one breach flash, and baited out three different sets of util from the EG side. They know that they're playing heavy towards there, and the quick reaction towards C, super, super interesting. Revealing area. The dart's going to confirm that there's no one playing C. They're going to be able to march their way out, clear the turret, get the spike down. And honestly, given that it's a, a pistol, that that's a big win in and of itself. Yeah, breathtaking taking mid is one of the answers that you can make here, but Zia showing why it is an answer. They're cleaning up Alexi Kohaibi, trying to make sure that they don't get that garage hit and completely shutting down this post plant for SMG. I mean, Doug, that first, I really want to talk about that first set of util that they used towards that line, because that was so good. They used one set of util to set a wave of util off EG, but they didn't waver. They still managed to rotate time. They still managed to re-clear something together as a team, and taking this mid space kind of absolutely denied SMG any chances of using their flanks that we like to talk about. Even on defense side, they're trying to set up those flank positions, the rewrap positions, and it did not work. There was a setup for it too, you're absolutely right, and that's what netted them the Prime Gaming. Flawlesses were tied at seven apiece, and now Evil Geniuses find themselves in a spot where they can do what SMG did to them. Remember at the beginning, it was a bonus, you see it uh, on your timeline there. They could try to respond doing the same. EG have already taken so much space down C Long, they've sent two this way. And it's traded one for one. And honestly, again, given that it's EG and a bonus, given that that's a Spectre, they're okay with that. Yeah, a really good trade. I mean, I would want to get a Vandal down from the opposing team. Bomb and now they're out. setting up a lot of util towards that A site. They know the bomb has been dropped towards Long, absolutely stopping bomb that execute out. from SMG. And now they're in actually a number deficit, but they do have these long range weapons. Trying to take those fights, I think, is a super important part of this. Kahibi with a massive kill on the Starbound as it seems like Starbound's gonna be able to shut it down and Aerie pushing Back forward, getting a standing. second, leaving Power Pixel A on their own. A Marshall into the face of a Phantom and a Vandal with the spike planted. planted. Such a big ask. But can Power Pixel A pull it off? A couple of shots rattling off. Expecting the swing, actually waiting for the flash to jump out. And the stun, excellent use of utility. To create some space to try to find the way forward, but they ultimately cannot. Kaibi cleans it up, bonus avoided, and SMG take the lead once more. Yeah, EG getting three guns down from SMG is actually super, super good for them. I mean, we have the two Guardian buys, half armor. Like, this is going to be actually not what they planned because SMG losing those guns was actually really, really important. They did a really good job of retaking the round, though. They brought it back. Yeah. They took the fights that they needed to fight to take, sorry, with those guns in order to win that fight, and the util dump was just great on their side. Heavy lean towards C this time around. Perhaps a flash dash set up in the garage or something like that. There's the fault line, but the molly dissuades right off the bat. Seems like they're going to continue to commit and creep forward. No ults online, really, for either side. The paranoia is going to cause serious problems to Sam tries to stay alive back side. Starbound is there to help. First falls. Thea is still back here, still gone unchecked. They're so focused on the push in from spawn. Finally, Thea falls. But it alleviates some of the pressure. Now, Scary Shark left alone with the op rotating over in a 1v2. Can they pull it off? The new addition to the roster. Oh my god, the timing of that peak was so good, but. Camille just successfully running away in time, and they have so much stuff to play off of. They have that stun, they have the shock down. But Lexi, as soon as she sees that smoke coming out, she takes that peek and wins that fight. I mean, such a good round. They did not let the Molly kind of waver them from taking that C split. And I think, like you said, 
Thea was alive for so long, but she could not do anything with it. So unfortunate because her team was ready to flood, but they just couldn't get out in time. I think that's something that SMG was doing really well over EG, but EG is having the reach. They just need to be like one second faster and they would be able to get the timing on this team. Timeout called from the number one seed out in North America, finding themselves on the international stage for the first time. Game changers, given the roster changes, given everything that's gone on, the crazy path that they've taken to get up until this point. And they, once again, as you know, we talked about a lot on the first map, they find themselves in a slugfest against the number one seed out from the APAC region. And for good reason. I think we've seen a lot of really awesome things out of SMG. And the first map was a stomp. This has yeah. been far more competitive. Uh, but uh, Athena, I'd love to get your thoughts. What is it that you're seeing out from EG that could be the difference maker here, at least compared to the first game? Yeah, I mean, EG definitely showing a lot more confidence than the first game. I think they were not thus thrown off. Obviously, this is a comp that's pretty meta, so they're used to playing against sure, this sure. type of comp. I think the Astra is the only little bit of change, but that's not enough to kind of th completely throw off EG. I mean, like I said, they're having the right reads and they're having the good setups. Their util together is really, really good. Tarts SMG's out. hive mind mentality, though, is just beating them like seconds yep. towards the race of who's getting which site and who's getting the trades. Pistols for the defense. The Down two rounds. They've got a couple of volts to work with. But the two members of Evil Geniuses that are at Sorte are about to have to deal with this five stack pushing in towards A main. Scary Shark close, already taking a little bit of damage to Shorty's there. One shot goes off, but the kill in favor of Kahibi. Look at Lori oh. here. Lori's going to be overwhelmed as well. Yeah, I mean, such a close. I mean, you have to take those close range fights, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, Scary Shark really tried. Absolutely. I think getting a setup into that util area, making sure you play for the choke and having a little bit of support is the most that you can do. But SMG again, taking a little bit of risk by taking that short control, just walking up, but kind of proving again that their confidence is up there. They're ready to take those fights. They expected that someone is going to be playing close and we're not worried about it. And Jerry actually pushing up, trying to get more kills. Oh. Interesting. That works. I can tell you, I mean, with the, the breach changes, uh, now that there's only two pulses on the uh, whatever you call it now that I'm forgetting, I don't think I've seen somebody die to that <laughs> up until then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those. Yeah, again, I'm sorry, I messed you up because I called you them did. booms, huh? Yeah, yeah, and you did. You and now I'm forgetting like, what, what it's actually, actually called. called. Yeah. Uh, it's not a fault line. <laughs> <laughs> That's the after shot. After, after shot. shot. You got it. Hey, man. You got me messed <laughs> up. Yeah, so the after booms. <laughs> anyway. No, I think they're, yeah, that piss around, not much they could do. Right. Um, I think they had the right idea, but just again, SMG just seems to be ready for everything at this point. Oh, note the, the pings on the mini map from the attacking yeah, side into A short. It seems like they're concerned of somebody taking that aggressive peek. That's exactly where an area's heading with blades online. Power Pixel like, trying to spam and cause some damage. Meanwhile, you have an op on the other side, but there's no action being found. Rolling Thunder used, and that's going to pave the way. But do they clear? Yes, they do. Lori falls. Now they're going to get out onto site. The smoke is late. It's not going to cause any problems. They're going to have all the room they want. But I've got to remind, again, they've got a lockdown in line from Starbound and the op coming over from Scary Shark. Yeah, I mean, this could be a good retake coming in from EG. They yeah, do have the yeah. flank coming around. They might just catch off Kohaibi. She's right moving there. into her, her positioning. But again, like we said, such a slow pace coming in from EG, setting up for that lockdown, forcing them out. And while they do, they have the two players ready to contest that position. I'm, I didn't think Alexi was going to ult because they're positioned on the map, but they finally ult, and all the kills come in favor of SMG. That was fast. That was ferocious. That's another out for the attacking side. Oh my god, Alexi holding on to that ult for so yeah. long while in such a weird spot, but she did not care. I mean, her team was ready to hold it down for her. They were literally all around ready to support her no matter what. Lori actually getting that first pick was so good. She seems to be so confident, mm -hmm. but what can you do when the whole team is right behind that first player, ready to trade her out? Boss that's so well. Yeah. It's kind of a boss move, like yeah. the middle of sight. Damn. And that, honestly, that's why I thought maybe she wasn't going to use it. Yeah. Because of her positioning on the map, she waited a little bit, but commits to it. And you're right, it's likely because there was a whole freaking firing squad uh, <laughs> around her to make sure that she'd be protected. And it works out. Another timeout, the second of the map, being used by Evil Geniuses. Yeah. And we find ourselves once again surprised. <laughs> I mean, 
maybe not for the APAC representatives, and for good reason. Again, they come into this with an undefeated record. Their map record is insane. It's it's, it's almost like dumb how yeah. good they are and how much they win. And EG have just really not been able to respond since the opening, uh, since Lotus. Yeah, EG is definitely trying to play to their strengths, but again, SMG strengths just seems to be super overpowering yeah. yep. at this point. I think definitely having a roster change is kind of a big deal to kind of factor in. So oh, for sure. It's not all in just the fact that like SMG is super, super powerful. Yes, they are, but EG are also trying to fill in the gaps that they've previously had to fill in. And it's looking like it's making things a little bit harder on their side, but they do end up going into this on an eco. They're thrifting this round. They have that Sheriff, they have Stinger, Ghost. Not much they can do. They have a Sova ult. It's looking a little bit rough against this for the 12th point area. of the map. I think this is going to be a hit towards B at the end of the day, too. I mean, you see some of the utility come through. You've got the darts that are trying to clear out B and Don't lean that way. Now, the alarm bot is still up, but an is going to go up above it and over it so quickly and it's difficult for EG to be able to respond. They're going to commit to the plant before there's really anything they can do. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's crazy going towards B on a thrifty like that when they know that they're not fully buying. That's bold. So scared of close range fights, but Neri literally just took all the space and was like, yep, all good, all clear. That's actually the most alpha thing too because they also drew out the Hunter's Fury from Lori. They still commit to the spike. They get it down. And this is way closer than it should be. Hold the phone. Shirazi, a 1v2 both weak. Lori has upgraded a weapon. Thea has as well. But they have the benefit of playing in the post plan of forcing EG to be the ones to make a move. It's just a tap. It's just a fake. The second remaining. from the first go falls. The second does oh too. A Red Bull clutch as SMG gets a series point. Shirazi showing why she is the MVP of stability on this team. Holding down sides on that defense side and clutching it up when she needs to on that attack side. Such a good, good, it was a messy round. Yeah, good yeah, start. It was. Messy middle, great ending. <laughs> That was insane. I mean, the B hit was so clean, but the post plant, I mean, they're holding close to the smokes, even though all these players have sheriffs and stingers and kind of really good close range guns. So it's a little bit questionable holding it, but I do like the confidence that they have. EG with backs against the ropes and a desperate need to, to change you momentum, to turn the tides, to do something, anything to keep themselves in this. SMG already investing the cosmic divide. Up in the hands of Scary Shark, that could be the difference maker. The execute coming in again, the first wave of Util baiting out all the other Util, and they just chill. Once losing Inari, they don't force it, they don't go in. Four players stacked on the A site here, and the lockdown coming in from KJ to completely get them off site. It's a fake, though. I mean, they're rotating away. The spike is headed towards C. The problem is that turret, I believe it's going to catch if anyone creeps up towards C long. Yeah, KJ rotating off just in range of her turret, I believe, but her turret is going to go down. Oh no, it's back up. It <gasps> she took him. it back. Okay, it caught them. That's really good. The rotation's coming in. Again, it's a 5v4, Doug. They have a really good spot in order to retake. But again, no flankers. They are going to have to funnel in through this. And SMG is looking to take an aggressive fight towards spawn. Note here very quickly, Power Pixel is one kill away from getting the Rolling Thunder online, but it's not going to matter as everything crumbles. Starbound left alone. A 1v3 with 26 HP. The last stand possible against the APAC representatives falls apart. SMG take down EG 2-0 and make a statement on the international stage. They're not just good at home, they're good on the biggest stage GC has to offer. What a statement. They literally showed what they're made of and they absolutely showed how good they are and how good they play together. EG again kind of trying to fill in the gaps, trying to keep up, but SMG just looking so dominant, so confident. And again, hive mind mentality, man. That works because every single decision they made seemed to be super unified and super strong because they just did it all together with a reaction speed that the other team does not have. It's just unbelievable. I mean, you think about how they went about it too. They went about it with style, they went about it with four duelists, and then they went to a more conventional comp and they were able to execute that as well. It really felt like they did everything they wanted fr from beginning to end. Yeah, I mean, at that point, kind of looking like it was a roll. A lot of the rounds super close, actually, towards that Haven side. Again, we're talking about how EG was sort of starting to bring it back, bring back their momentum. Yeah. I think they're going to have a lot to learn from these games going into that lower bracket. But as 
Japan SMG showing who they are. And honestly, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy because that was my Dark Horse prediction. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that for me, you know. I'm, I'm going good. I mean, you, you may have picked well. Again, all smiles. <laughs> For Team SMG, they take down EG 2-0, and yes, it's just the opening round. Yes, they still have the lower bracket that they can run through, but an outrageous performance. We've got to once again talk about the fact that they did it with swagger. They did it with confidence. They never really dissuaded from what they wanted to do in the face of annotations from EG, in the face of really everything that they could attempt to do. SMG just stuck to their game plan. They knew what they wanted, and it was the dominance. Yeah, I mean, again, another thing to know is every single player on this team held their own. I mean, we yeah, saw Shirazi yeah, holding it down, and Neri getting first kills, even on the Cypher, playing amazing as a Senti. Then we have Alexi just going off. She actually ended up with the most frags in the game, which I think is insane. And then Camille and Kohaibi, again, denying their map control, denying a lot of things, and making the plays for their team. I think a really big prop is also to use for their util use. Every single part of this puzzle fit together perfectly for SMG, and we saw how it played out for them at the end. I mean, it's early, but yeah, I think SMG is a team that we're going to have to keep a very close eye on with how good they looked. And ultimately for EG, yeah, you mentioned it earlier, I think there are a lot of things that they're going to learn as they go back, yeah. as they look through this series. I think Jovi talked about it a little bit in between map one and map two, the, this idea of perhaps showing a team too much respect. Yep. Right, if perhaps playing a bit too timidly, maybe Enemy a bit too much to the book, especially in a comp like this against a team like this, you have to try to match that fire with fire. Yep. They ultimately just weren't able to. And, you know, who else, or who knows, excuse me, what else this tournament is going to have? Because you, this is just the opening day. And we've already had quadruple du duelist comps. We've had everything like that. Like, again, this really has anything, any sort of flavor that you may want if you're a Valorant fan. Yeah, I mean, again, we're talking about EG and how long it took for them to kind of warm up almost to this game. And I feel like that's something they're going to have to bring into the lower bracket here yeah, because they yeah. have to bring the fact that they're ready, they're prepared, and they're ready to go at whatever pace that they need to go. And I think, again, we were seeing them come back a little bit on Haven, and that's where, like you were saying, they were kind of warming up. They are getting back into it, but... Again, it's a little bit too late. It's just a little too late. I will say, again, a benefit for EG fans at home, you've got a lot of experience on that roster, namely in the in the hands of Thea and in the hands of Lori. They've been on the international stage across multiple games at this point. They know what it's like. They have faced a loss like this. So there's still plenty of possibility. There's still plenty of room for adjustments to be made and for tournament, tournament runs to be had. But again, for SMG, holy smokes. If this is how much fun it's going to be to watch them every time, y'all, <laughs> you guys got to stay tuned, I mean, man. the four Duelist comp, man. That was so fun to watch. I was actually so happy seeing that. I like that was actually the best, I think, game that I've seen so far. Opening game, at least, yeah, from yeah. any team to show their confidence, show their dominance, and show that they're not scared to be here and play on stage. Which is often something that you see people crumble with, right? Yeah. Like you find yourself on the international stage for the first time, perhaps a, a, a little shooken, right? You can't shooken. figure things out. Shooken. I think I just made that word up. Um, <laughs> shaken was what I was looking for. Uh, you just can't execute, right? And for them, it doesn't really matter who's on the other side. Yeah. It's only been one rep, but it was a very impressive rep, all things considered. Yeah, both teams really showing what they got here at the beginning of this GC tournament. I think both teams have a lot to learn. Both teams have a lot to prove. Like you said, Thea and Lori here showing that, hey, they deserve to be here too. I mean, like you said, Lori showed how she was last GC, putting up a huge, huge fight, showing that she is really, really good on that stage and experienced. But both teams had so much to prove. And I think SMG just coming out on top just shows that maybe they're super, super hungry and they're way hungrier than EG right now. But you know, we, we need to talk about how EG had that roster change. So right, yeah. that is that makes a huge difference. factor in it. Yeah. I mean, this is this has been their roster for what, like all year all, for yeah, SMG? For, yeah. Yeah. So you like do forever. have that like whole year difference between mm -hmm. like the month or so that EG had to practice with this new player. Yeah. And I think really I, that is definitely something to be considered. I do think at the end of the day, though, it's the international stage. Yeah. There's no asterisks around this right like True. you win you lose that's ultimately all that matters and i think for smg it's very impressive we're going to throw it down to mika who's standing by with kamiyu for the verizon post-match interview right now with Camille from team s 
SMG after that series win against PG. Camille, I have to ask, there was a big question as to whether SMG was good only with an APAC or something else. And now that we have that validation, how are you feeling? Uh, first of all, we all feel great because uh, we did good on our first series. Yeah. And uh, were you expecting to be uh, that strong against EG, of course, coming from uh, the, the first seed from North America? Mm, to be honest, I didn't really expect that much to be this because each region have different gameplay, so I didn't really expect, but which I expect is that we can adapt well. That is fantastic. And I don't know if you noticed, but the crowd over here, the Brazilian crowd, was screaming, SMG, SMG, yeah. SMG. How does it feel like knowing you won oh. over the home crowd? Actually, yeah, we can hear them even through our noise cancellation. It felt really great because we can see, we can feel their support and it really adds up to our momentum. And finally, you guys are up against G2, the defending champions, in your next match. How are you feeling about that? Uh, maybe not me also, not me only, but with my teammates, I feel we were all gonna be so excited to play with them, to test out also the different firepowers, their game style, so yeah, we're looking forward. Really exciting stuff, everybody's looking forward to that one. Thank you, Kumiya, for your time. Thank you. Oh, we are indeed. I'm joined once again by Baby Bay and uh, Ender. We're going to get a G2 SMG uh, next round upper bracket. I don't think many people would have predicted that. I'm excited for that. I definitely didn't I, predict I, it. I don't know. I I, I'm it. like, that's not that, that out, <laughs> out of this world. I think a lot of people thought Team SMG, even if they you know didn't think it would be this stylish, mm -hmm. could have seen them over EG. G2 was certainly a surprise, though. I think uh, Team oh. could looked very strong. But in terms of this actual game that we just saw them take down, I was, again, very impressed with SMG, especially on their defense. I thought a lot of the ways they mixed it up round to round really surprised EG. Uh, Athena was commenting on how the operator in Anari's hands was always down A long every round, but they sometimes were fighting behind it with three players and sometimes were stacking to fast retake on that C site. <laughs> and it seemed like they guessed right every single time and punished EG for it. I mean, this could have been another scoreline like the first map if uh, if Lori didn't do that amazing clutch yet. I mean, if that didn't happen, yeah. this, this is a whole different story. This, this is like a 13-3, honestly. Uh, this is a thing they're now having seen a, a funky side of the team SMG and a more serious side of team oh. SMG. How big of a contender Baby Bay are they in this tournament now? They're definitely still a really big contender, but I think that I saw cracks in their gameplay, especially with the comeback that EG was starting to be able to have. I think if you give that momentum and it swings to a team like G2, it could be devastating. Yeah, of course, on the other side, EG, they do have the lower bracket. Double elimination, we will see them uh, again. And as you guys mentioned, Lori, she was trying her hard oh, yeah. out this series. Yeah, uh, again, Lori was a superstar back in Berlin, and this clutch was under. She realized she didn't have time to run out of the kill drill, so she turns back around. Yeah, misplay on the opposite side, but Lori realizing she had to go for it and made it work. And some of the moves she had on defense, dancing around short, the utility play was on the money. Yeah, Un unfortunately they lost and the macro game, honestly, from SMG was really nice on that attack. Even at the last round that we watched, the fake with the KJ all, nobody's on site. I mean, they had all five people sold that it was going to be an A hit. That's that's brutal. That's not a good feeling to have. Yeah, I mean, the good news is EG, they will have a day, you know, to try yeah. and get themselves back together, uh, do some VOD review and try and correct a, a few things. But first, let's take a look at the HyperX moment of the day. And this goes to Aniri on the Cypher. By the way, on the cipher. This flick was. Me and Ender stared at each other yeah. in disbelief. Our mouths what? were just. All right, it looked way crazier the first time, but still, she was playing insane throughout the whole series. Oh, yeah. we're gonna get this pop as well. I didn't realize we had this. Yeah, the other side. I think we get to see it one more time. It's like boom. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That that headshot was just unreal. Seeing it sort of like that full on 90 degree angle, and then back over towards drop. Just nutty stuff and I don't know a dairy we knew was gonna be sick but it was on the cypher of all <laughs> things uh, Alexi too right behind her was just a power duo at the top the two years wait we had for Neri was worth every single second that we waited for her to make it to an international land uh, it's, it's all worth it now you know we I'm were okay literally with it. literally yeah. robbed not seeing her in Berlin last year it was yeah, literally it was, yeah by the way I, I didn't say this before when 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 she got eliminated on alter ego Celeste when they lost in that game five in their series it wasn't just a game five loss that was a 13 11 loss it was it wasn't 
one the worst map away. Way to lose. It was two rounds away from That's being the in worst Berlin. Way to lose. Yeah, now she's here to take the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's showing why she's a, she deserves to be here uh, for sure. And with that, we are rounding off day one here at Game Changers Championship. And let's take a look at that bracket. Uh, the, the, the lower bracket is already feeling kind of scary for Jeez. me. Whoever drops down to that lowest is going to be a little bit crazy. But what did you make of that day one, baby bay? It was, it was phenomenal, honestly. The first the first matches were great. Team Liquid versus G2, close game too in the first the first map. And then the SMB, how could you, no one's gonna forget about that first map that they had. That was the most ridiculous comp I've ever seen <laughs> in a game. And to see how well it worked was even more ridiculous. Yeah, and the best news is we've only seen four teams of this tournament. There are other four. I uh, will be taking the stage tomorrow, of course. Uh, EDG versus Shopify Rebellion, and then BBL Queens versus Crew Blaze. Christy, what do you make of those games? I mean, those are going to be so much fun. Like, seeing Shopify back here, fluorescent on the international stage. Like, I can we just, like, speed up the clock? I don't know. I, I am so looking forward to that match. That's the one you're looking forward to as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see how, how well Fluorescent is going to play in this series. And I think it's like the perfect team to play against as your first like LAN match. Yeah, and let's not forget, after all of that G2 versus SMG, tomorrow <laughs> is going to be crazy. Uh, thank you uh, to all of you guys at home for sticking with us for today. Thank you, Baby Bay and uh, Chrissy for joining me as well and all of the casters thank for you. being here. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be back <laughs> with more games tomorrow, so make sure you guys come back and join us for uh, EDG versus Shopify. We'll see you there. There are some new faces on stage with us today, but that does not change the storyline. G2 looking to defend their title from last year, and Team Liquid is revenge. But how easy do you think it's going to be? Because it feels like it's easier said than done. Yeah, you can see Petra really wanted to find an opening with that dog, but wow, a triple coming out here for G2. Mimi now shoots the wall, but still turns around for the pick. A Whoa. second one on her to Gina, but finally Bezerra comes in with two of her own, three into the round. As they close the gap, they just wait for their angles, and we close up the first map with G2 winning 14 to 12 in the overtime of Sunset. No flashes, and Sarah's on the off angle. Beautiful with the hat trick, with support from Petra. There's that first contact, but Stunner lines up two kills quite easy there. And here's a showstopper for confirmation, allowing Roxy to trade it right back. Beautiful flash though, and gets one full glided, but Daiki's right there in the end. Low HP, the lineup was almost there. Missed the satchel, oh, second one too far away. What? Oh! No what? way! No, 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 that should not happen. Keep all their bodies towards A. Oh my, four kills for oh. Mimi! Two shots coming in, maybe with the ace, and that's gonna be G2 winning the series. I love seeing how much fun they're both having out there, but things are about to get serious. EG, they're no stranger to a miracle run, but can they do that up against a team that has never lost a single <laughs> game? There's the flash, the dog gets cleared, and the kills oh come through just like that. An absolute slaughter, that is insane. They have to deal with the nerves of Lan and how to come back. And it's a new roster, but Scary Shark does not care. Scary Shark before, and they finally get around. Jump right into the action. We've missed a couple of kills. Uh, and it seems like SMG is still up. Uh, the maybe fourth, run it back. I think we missed more of the round than we actually saw. Because that's how fast it was. Did you see what happened? Because I didn't see what happened. Nope. It was a slaughter from beginning to end, 13 to three in favor of SMG. EG with a lot of things that they have to answer here. All funneling out through cut, and it's all working out for SMG once more. Another round in favor of SMG. The numbers, the defense from SMG hold up. The fast rotate proves to be a problem. Can Lori do this on her own? Tries to get away, and there he's up on it, and it's a 4K for Lori. The Red Bull clutch for EG. Holy smokes, what a round. Do they clear? Yes, they do. Lori falls, but they finally ult, and all the kills come in favor of SMG. That was fast. That was ferocious. That's another out for the attacking side. The last stand possible against the APAC representatives falls apart. SMG take down EG 2-0 and make a statement on the international stage. They're not just good at home. They're good on the biggest stage GC has to offer.